Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about BEM and CSS utility classes. So let's get into it. Now, the other day I was watching this video about a front-end developer, or rather by a front-end developer who was working at Meetup, which is a website for hosting different meetups. It's basically a platform for people to host different events, right? And so what was interesting about this was that the tech talk started off by talking about CSS and all the issues with CSS. And, you know, this is, uh, it's, it's easy. If, if you want to make a tech talk about CSS at a CSS conference, talking about how horrible CSS is and how you make it more manageable is, it's a popular topic. So that's a good idea if you ever want to make your first tech talk, just talk about how horrible CSS is because everybody wants to hate CSS. And so they had kind of, he started, he started off by saying that what they realized was that it was their approach to solving the issue with CSS over time, because as a junior, you may, you may not know this, you may go, okay, why is CSS so horrible and so tricky? Well, I'll tell you, CSS is not tricky or horrible if you are making a small little website for yourself or something of that nature, a blog or something like that. CSS becomes horrible in two scenarios. Number one, when you have a really large application, really, really large application, especially if it's a configurable application with a lot of say, dynamic content and stuff like that, or if you have a very long-lived project because CSS does not rot for the first developer usually it re it it's really uncommon that CSS becomes something you hate if you are the only person maintaining a project or if you are the first generation of a developer working on it first generation developer is basically that you are the one who started at the greenfield project basically when there was nothing you built everything and usually the people who start hating CSS are the people who get it in the second generation or third generation. Yeah, in other words, you start working at the company who has been around for a while and somebody has messed up the CSS or had caused all these issues over time. Third generation is usually the most horrible situation to be in as a developer, just period. If you're third generation, it's going to be much worse than if you're first. Even second generation is better than third. But anywho, so the talk was about how they discovered that how powerful utility classes are because their idea was that you would kind of have to find a way to write, as they said, less CSS. And I wanted to touch on that a little bit because they actually mentioned BEM as well. And for those of you who don't know it, BEM stands for Block Element Modifier and is a CSS convention or a naming convention for making CSS scale. Now there are other methods, of course, but my personal favorite is BEM, and I have a few videos about, about BEM and so forth and why I think it's so powerful. But what I wanted to touch on here is that in this tech talk, they said that the way that they think about utility classes, which is another way of solving things, is that basically what you do is that you have these very small n named CSS classes that represent a certain type of styling. So let's say that you have like bootstrap has a very famous one which is pull left or pull right which basically all it does is that it floats something to the left or to the right that i that mentality things such as having css classes for margins for paddings for all of these different things right and the what's beautiful what's kind of what, what i thought was interesting was that the argument that they made was that a lot of people see a lot of HTML with this approach and they see like a bunch of these small tiny little utility classes in their HTML and the spontaneous reaction to a lot of people is oh this is ugly or how could you write this this is like inline CSS uh, or inline styles and so they defended themselves by saying well if you if you think th think that way then you don't have a good enough abstraction layer you need to put it a little bit higher so you have a, a compound level of styling so you kind of have your design team standardized on a few margins and a few paddings and and then you use those styles and what you do then is that you kind of you you just use a higher level abstraction so you don't have to use all these super tiny methods or css classes to do the whole styling 
And what I thought was interesting was that they ended by saying that by doing this, they could write less CSS. And what I wanted to touch on here is that the, the duality between, or rather the paradox of this is that it, from my perspective, what they're doing is that they're trading one issue for another issue. What do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is that when it comes to having all, like the idea is not a dumb one. To have utility classes that do certain margins and paddings and you use those basically to iteratively just add things on top of an element so that it's styled exactly as another element. That's great. The issue comes, as, as they kind of pointed out, that you okay. The first assumption that they made was that the design team has standardized on all the margins, the paddings, the font sizes, and all of this stuff, which is great. Until the design team wants to do a one-off thing, which happens all the time. Or if something changes on the page, or something changes with a base style of some sort, all of a sudden now, you're in the situation where, although it's in theory, because that was the argument as well from the video that you kind of, you have to, you have to make that decision. It has to be an atomic thing. So if the design team wants to do an one-off thing, you as a developer should stand there and say, no, we have a standardized component. We're going to use that. That's great. Hopefully that's going to work out for you until your boss comes in and asks you, what, the f what are you doing? Why are you arguing with the design team? Do what they're saying and then you're in a whole heap of trouble. And now you have to make a separate utility class or a separate utility solution in order for just to cater to that one case. And this is actually fairly common. And what's even worse is that now, because what they're saying is that, hey, we want to avoid writing a lot of CSS. So now instead you have to learn this pseudo, because it's basic, you basically all you did was that you took away CSS, which is a standard, and made your own pseudo language. They even had styles sort of media queries where they would have classes that represent the different styling that would be applied at different media query intervals. Once again, all you've done is that you've strapped, abstracted away CSS, put a, your own language on top of it, and that's it. You still have the CSS there. And what I argue is that the, the argument against BEM for the most part is that there's a lot of duplication that you have to, like there's a lot of, like you basically redeclare the styles over and over. And I'll touch on that in just a moment. But what I think is interesting is that in CSS, you have two choices when it comes to the amount of CSS that you have to write in order to make something look the way it looks. You can either, I argue, do the utility thing and put all the duplication in the HTML. Because the, the, amount, the properties are still there. You still have to declare all the styles. You can either put them in the HTML with classes, or you can put them in the CSS. In other words, the class holds all of the properties with all the duplication. And if you ask me, which I actually left a comment on that video, where I said that I think that if the debate is between, if the discussion is, or rather if the goal is to write the least amount of CSS, I think that you, you, can, you can have that. It's kind of like you can have your cake and still eat it. Because in my opinion, the BEM naming convention scales, in my experience, it scales better than anything I've ever used. I've never seen anything that scales as well. It's as easy to understand. It works. It do, you don't have to be a CSS master or a super front-end developer. Every single company I've ever worked for where I taught them to the, to the, to the other developers, like even the back-end developers who hate CSS love BEM because it's so easy to understand. It's basically object-oriented programming at the naming level. Anywho, so what I argue is, that, uh, the comment I left was basically along the lines of saying that, all right, so you want to, you want to avoid duplication. You want to uh, write the least amount of CSS, but at the same time, you don't like that you have these, all, this, all these class names and all these classes in your HTML. Well, the solution is fairly easy, in my opinion. Use something like SAS or less or post CSS and use the BEM naming convention for your class names in your HTML, which means that there's usually just one or two classes per element. And then because, you know, and that, that means that you're doing BEM now. So that makes us think about, okay, how, how do we solve them the problem of writing less CSS? Well, it's easy. You look at the common properties 
let's say that you have all these utility functions with margins and paddings and all of this, these standardized things. There's nothing stopping you from using a preprocessor, such as SAS, for example, create standardized classes that have these common properties like margins and paddings and so forth, and simply extend them or use a mixin or something to include it in the output the date in the output at CSS. That way you can it, it, it the result is or rather the goal of having as little CSS as possible is fulfilled and you still have nice names in your HTML. I I still haven't really I there's really, I can't really see a downside to it. It's to me, the way to go, if and it's the way that I write CSS all the time, because it is a good practice. I, don't kid yourself; it's a very good practice to have a, a consensus between you and the design team to standardize on fonts, margins, colors. You should standardize absolutely everything because because it allows you to move quicker. But you don't have to overcomplicate things as well. I think that. This utility function, utility style of working is a good idea, but I think that this, what I'm suggesting, is even better. That's at least from my experience. As I said, all you have to do is to, you still create these utility functions or utility classes that holds the common styling, and then you simply extend them. Now, don't go crazy with the extension, guys. I'm just, I'm just trying to say that there's no need for you to mess up and clutter up your HTML when you have something like a preprocessor. You can, as I said, you can have your cake and still eat it. That's at least how I feel about it. Have a great day.